So, how do you put the camera inside of the housing? Well, it's pretty simple. Uh, Cam's done a pretty good job of this, and uh, a lot of the uh, camera manufacturers are, are pretty similar. Um, they all use a, uh, a tray that you first have to install on the camera. Uh, I don't have the 7D body uh, to show you because I'm using it to film this video. Uh, but you basically install uh, this on the bottom, and then there's another little uh, little hole that you, you put this little tab in. And then once you install that, slide the slide the camera in there, you lock it, and then you have it in there. Uh, some things that you want to align, uh, nothing so far, uh, but if you install it, and I've talked about this, if you install it with, uh, with the off button on, um, then that can be an issue. But fortunately for the design of this housing, it's not. So, put it on the back, and, well, oh, first, you can't forget this part. Um, if you're out in the field, you always have to remember to check your, your O-ring. Um, it's really important, because this O-ring can get hair on it. Um, there is grease on the O-ring, and it makes it a little sticky. And because it's a little sticky, it can attract dust and hair and things like this. I don't think you really have to worry too much about dust and little, little bits of hair, but uh, bigger strands of hair that can um, sort of lay lengthwise across this O-ring can actually cause, uh, cause water to get into your housing. So what you have to do is you have to do a spot check every time you open this housing. And it makes it really inconvenient, but it's the same thing across every housing you're going to come across for a camera. Um, every camera has O-rings in it. It's just a necessary precaution because you don't want to ruin your camera because you're taking it underwater, which is really cool. Um, so, no hairs. Okay, that's good. Let's close the back. Okay. Let's just close the latches. Okay, so typically the, the lens would be sticking out right here, and you would take either your dome port or your macro port, and then you would install it now. Um, here I have the Zen uh, dome. It's a mini dome. This is actually one of the smallest domes ever made. It's a little dirty. I should clean it. Um, but, uh, but you can fit this dome in your pocket, and it's a fantastic piece of glass. It is glass. There are also acrylic domes. Um, glass is more expensive. This dome retails for around uh, $900, um, and they get uh, quite a bit more expensive than that. Um, Zen makes great, great domes. Um, I think this is a fantastic, uh, fantastic build quality. Um, Again, you can see your O-ring, and just like I said a minute ago with installing a camera into this housing, you're going to have to check this O-ring as well, as well as every single O-ring that you have. So you have to make sure that there's no, no hairs, and if you do have a hair, simply just kind of wipe it off. First, you should make sure that this is open. Can't forget that part. And then you just install it. Push it. There you go. Um, the dome port hath been installed. Um, and again, typically these dome ports run much bigger. And in fact, most of the time they run so big that they'll they'll come over the bottom of this. So I couldn't lay this down flat. Um, they usually get you know they can be that big. And I mean, some guys have their own custom domes that get out to be that big. Uh, but this is a great dome to travel with. Domes are really inconvenient to travel with, so having a small one is, is really nice. Um, so, let's move on to discussions of control arms. These bad boys. These are control arms. And control arms are what is going to control your strobe. 
position. Focus light, an external focus light, so let's put it on. 